I just thought I would like to be part of making that kind of magic. For the latest in the 17% Guide to Careers in the Theatre, I've gone behind the scenes to interview Anna Stamper, a freelance scenic artist. Behind the Drury Lane Theatre is the paint frame, one of the few surviving in London, where whole sets are painted. Shrek the Musical is playing in the main house and Anna is working on a new safety curtain for the Gilgood Theatre. Hello, my name's Anna Stamper and I'm a scenic artist and I've been, which means I paint scenery for theatres and pretty well anybody else who needs something painted. So I've painted a bridge over Kilburn High Road with clouds and stars and things, along with doing furniture for people, for their houses and things, and prop furniture. But mostly what I do are large backgrounds, uh, landscapes or abstract backgrounds or figurative backgrounds and sets for the theatre and for ballet and for opera. So I've been a, a scenic artist for 30 years now, so I ought to know what I'm doing. And I started off life um, as a, well I did a fine art degree, and then I went to work selling ice creams and programmes at the Old Vic in Bristol because I thought, I want to work in the theatre, I didn't know how else to get in. And in those days, you couldn't do degrees in scenic art, um, or there were very, very... In fact, there weren't any related courses to scene painting at all. You could go and be a designer, a theatre designer, but not a painter. So I managed to get a job assisting out in the paint frame when the scenic assistant broke her leg, and then I kind of carried on from there. Um, I was working in the prop store too, which I also really enjoyed making props. So that was that, that was my background. And then I went up to Pit Lockery with a very experienced scenic artist and did a kind of training season with him where I learnt a lot about set painting. And then I went on to the National where I learnt how to paint cloths and learnt a really high standard. I think that was one of the great things about going to work at a, for an institution like the National where the standard is very high. I left and I've been freelance ever since working for all kinds of people. So I've worked for La Scala in Italy and I've worked um, in Paris and I've worked in um, Osaka in Japan and I've had paintings that have gone out to Tokyo and I've worked, I've had things that have gone to America, I've had things that have gone all, all over the place. I haven't always managed to go with them but I've done a fair bit of travelling too which has been lovely. Um, I get to work with lots of different materials and mediums, so I do pictorial things, so I could do a painting of a person or a, a street scene, but I also have to be able to work with textures, so I might have to make a three-dimensional brick wall or a wall that looks three, you know, I'll be given a piece of scenery that's a, a three-dimensional thing and then I'll texture it to make it look like wall. So. It's, it's a, a wonderfully varied job. I get to do lots and lots of different kind of challenges. And I think one of the things I really enjoy most about my job is working out all the different things, you know, having problems to solve. So at the moment I'm working on a, a project which is a lovely project for me because it's not a piece of scenery, uh, which means it'll last, it'll have a long life. It's going to be a safety curtain that's going to go to the Gilgood Theatre. When I, when I left fine art, uh, doing my degree, um, I decided that I wanted to work in the theatre because I went to a pantomime and it was magical. And there were these beautiful transformation gauzes. And a transformation gauze is when you see a picture on the stage and the picture melts away and you'll see people doing something behind it a special kind of gauze where you paint it, paint the front, but because it's a gauze it's full of holes. When it's got lighting on the front of the, the gauze, you see the picture, and when you take the light away from it and you bring light up behind the gauze, you see the image behind it. And it's like magic, so you've got one picture and then it melts away and you've got 
another image, and then the gorse flies out. And I just thought I would like to be part of making that kind of magic. And that's probably still one of the things that I find most exciting, is the kind of magical things that can happen on stage, visual magical things. The bit that I do can kind of bring it alive and make it, take it into another dimension. And sometimes can be a really important part of the story itself. It can tell, help tell the story if it's, if it's done well. Um, so that's one of, one of the things that excites me about it, is that element of all these different ideas and people's ideas coming together to create something bigger than any one single part of it. But I think the things that excite me most are the creative challenges that I come up against. And having a model and taking a model that can be fairly loose, but you know what the designer wants, and really getting inside the designer's head so that you can actually take the whole concept and the idea one stop on. And that's very exciting. So you stand back at the end of the project and you look at the model and you can absolutely see the model in your work, but it's the model plus something. So um, what advice would you have for young women who'd like to get into this profession? I go down the path of getting a degree, which can be useful later on to move into all sorts of different areas, for instance if you want to go and work in education, and I don't mean just as a teacher, but in educational departments, in theatres and things, that's quite useful to have. Um, you'll learn a certain amount of business stuff, and you will, you should go through the basis of um, scenic art, how to pin out a cloth and all those kind of things. But then what you have to do is just, and also through doing the degree you will then be introduced to other scenic arts. But if you're starting from flat and you just want to come into it, I think you have to, I would go to the National Theatre and speak to Hilary Vernon Smith. I would go to the Opera House and speak to Emma, who will then put you in touch with other scenic artists. Because I don't think there's a, a sort of a catalogue of scenic artists where you can go and look people up. But once you're in, then you'll find it through. But I also think that it's a really good idea to try and go and work somewhere like Pitt Lopry, one of the rep theatres where you're doing a high turnover of shows. And it's a very different kind of restrictions on you to do that. It's a different discipline, I suppose, is a better way of putting it. So I think it's very good to do that before coming into working for a scenic company like and you can look up carpentry companies and go and work for big scenic building studios and prop making companies and that sort of thing. I think in, in scene painting now, you'll find there's more women than there are men painting for theatre and opera and ballet. And in television and in film, there are more men. And I think that's because film and TV are paid better, so men have tended to hung, hang on to those areas. At the turn of the century, everything was done by chaps. Um, all the big scenic carpentry companies would have been run by men and would have had men as apprentices working up. And that was still probably still quite true up until you know, late 70s, early 80s. Um, when I went to the National Theatre in the early 80s, they were all women bar two men. The person in charge was a man and then there was another man, but all the rest of the painters there were women. At the BBC at the time, all the painters were men bar two women. And the, in the uh, film world, it tends to be all men, and it used to be families that would run it. So you kind of, it was nepotistic. You kind of had to be one of the gang to get in. So not only did you have, need to be a chap, but you needed to be a family member or know somebody. So, so that would have been the in for that. And I think that's changing now. I don't know what the proportion of men to women doing, say, scenic art courses are. Um, I think men... Still, I think there's a kind of men tend to earn better than women, and I think maybe they're just braver about asking for more. And um, 
it's certainly true that when I think about the people who are running scenic studios as opposed to carpentry building studios, which are definitely the preserve still of men, although there are more young women coming through college as carpenters now, so that might change in, say, 15, 20 years' time. Um, all the places that are what I call scenic studios tend to be run by men. Um, men of my generation, but so, for instance, the paint frame at Drury Lane um, is, is on a lease and it was taken out by two extremely good artists, um, Gordon and Alistair. And I suppose they just had the courage to take uh, the risk of taking on the lease at the time because of the, to take on the lease is a, an enormous financial commitment. And I think men... I'm trying to think why women aren't doing it, and I think probably it's because men tend to uh, be prepared to take more risks than women do. And I don't know whether family's relevant, because I've had a family, and so maybe the worries about making sure I've got my family coming before my paint frame or my studio. And it's kind of... It's a bit of a mad and maverick world. It's not a very kind world. You don't get weekends and you don't get clear holidays and your days are sometimes long, but then you also have days where you have days off unexpectedly because you have to wait for paint to dry, so you go shopping and that's quite fun too. And there's lots of nice people in the theatre world. That's something that's good. You're constantly meeting new people and they're all... I think people are interested in their job first and foremost and I think that brings a different kind of importance to, um, you know, people's priorities are perhaps different from, from just doing it simply for the money. So that's quite nice too, to be, I feel very privileged to be doing something where I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, because I think lots of people have very dull jobs and they, they make their lives through their hobbies and what happens at home. So I would say to young women coming into the business, be brave and set up a studio as soon as you possibly can because it will bring work to you and I regret not doing that.